We're, we're here to break ground on a project that'll hopefully uh, stabilize the seawalls for generations to come. What kind of an impact will this have on uh, flood control in this area? Well, uh, what we're going to do here is hopefully going to stabilize the seawall to make sure that it remains in place and is able to break the wave energy from future events and really just a, a north uh, storm during the winter. We're going to start the repairs of the seawall, which are long overdue. It's uh, almost a $20 million project. I think it's very important. The, the seawall was r really the city's first significant commitment to flood protection and back in the in the 20s when they started thinking about it I guess it was completed 80 years ago uh, and it served us well it it, it needs work uh, almost every not almost every storm that that comes in the lake uh, washes over the top of the sea well creates a lot of erosion a lot of problems and uh, this project will will prevent that from happening in the future what we're breaking ground on today is part of a three-phase project. The first phase, uh, all three phases actually, will run in the neighborhood of about $6 million. But what it'll, what it'll protect is the seawall that is behind us here. Uh, right now, every time a storm blows in, even in, in winter storms, the storm blows the, the lake water over the seawall, hits the dirt behind the seawall, and washes all of that dirt onto Lakeshore Drive, making Lakeshore Drive impassable for weeks and costing tens of thousands of dollars every time to clean up the, the debris. In addition to that, when the water goes back into the lake, it erodes that same ground, goes behind the seawall, making that seawall less stable than it should be. This is the first flood control project built for the city of New Orleans. It breaks the energy of the waves that blow in with tropical depressions, tropical storms, and also winter storms, and provides uh, the first line of defense against those storms. So we hope that with this project and the two that will come up behind it, we'll arrest the, the problems that are presented to us by the lake and also uh, make Lakeshore Drive and as Robert said, the entire lakefront usable by the entire community. That's a, a big part of you know, living with water, uh, just as the Dutch do. That's a big part of what we hope to do here today. But this is an incredible project here. Not only what it's doing flood-wise to protect our seawall and uh, the erosion behind it, but it's great to see that this group has had the foresight to understand that this is more than just flood protection. They've been able to use this to also enhance the, the quality of Lakeshore Drive so the community can enjoy it as well. This is a very, very exciting time uh, for the lakefront. There, is, there are so many projects happening out here. We're very excited about all of them uh, that will uh, make this lakefront area usable again, not only for the residents in this area, but for everyone across the city, for everyone who comes into our city. So we're very, very excited about it, and we're going to be also uh, uh, talking about this project as well as some others at a town hall meeting uh, that I'll be sponsoring on uh, April 17th at uh, St. Dominic's from 6 to 8 p.m., so please come out to learn about all the projects that are going on out here at the lakefront and in the lake area. Thank you. Thank you, and it is a good day uh, for the citizens of uh, not only the lakefront, but the entire city that uh, this flood control project is about to commence. Uh, we all know what the power of water can do. Uh, we, uh, we know that best, and uh, this is not only gonna protect the quality of life, for uh, the recreation and amusement that happen along the uh, Lakeshore Drive, but uh, protecting the infrastructure uh, and integrity of neighborhoods. And so I'm glad uh, this project is uh, here to, uh, to begin. Thank you. I'd just like to thank Tim Duty, the director of the Southeast Louisiana Flood Protection Authority for all the good work that he does and the Flood Protection Authority does. You know, we're extremely susceptible to these water events in Southeast Louisiana, and we need to do everything that we can to protect ourselves, protect the citizens, and keep New Orleans a viable place to raise families. And this is a big step toward that, and I appreciate them, and I appreciate all the work they do. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Joe Hassinger. I serve as the vice chairman of the Non-Flood Authority. And I wanted to make a few brief comments to you. 
Over the last several years, the Non-Flood Authority and the Flood Authority have worked hard to accomplish two goals. One is to provide excellent flood protection and hurricane protection for the citizens of New Orleans. And second is to rebuild in a responsible way the non-flood assets that constitute the park space and other assets along Lakeshore Drive. This project is a big step toward accomplishing both of those goals. Uh, I'd suggest to you that it represents smart government, it represents vision, it represents responsible planning, and it represents cooperation. Um, I'd like to thank the Flood Authority, in particular and to the exclusion of no one, Tim Duty and John Barry, who's here, John, how are you? Um, for their leadership on this project and for their cooperation with the Non-Flood Authority. I'd also like to recognize Robert Lupo, who serves as president of the Non-Flood Authority, and remind you that the folks who serve on both of these authorities do so without pay. They do it because they love the city and they know what they're doing is important. The only benefit they receive is the satisfaction of knowing that they've made a difference. So I certainly want to commend everyone who serves on these two boards. Um, the citizens of New Orleans and from throughout the metro area, thousands a week, use the lakefront. It's a great source of relaxation, catching a beautiful sunset, uh, playing with the kids, biking, jogging, etc. Uh, this project will serve to enhance the non-flood assets and will be a great benefit for citizens from throughout the area who use the lakefront. So I'm excited about it, I'm pleased with it, and it represents a great uh, step forward toward rebuilding the non-flood assets and ensuring, at the same time, hurricane protection for the city. Thank you. This was a major commitment to flood protection made by the Orleans Levy District. There are no federal dollars in that, in here, there aren't in, in the rebuilding either. And we, the, the Flood Protection Authority, intends to do, to go forward and we are in the process of identifying projects that we can do in our own budget with our money that will enhance the safety of the area. And you will be seeing some of those projects started on in the next few years. Thank you. I'm glad John said that because we are in fact uh, not just, just doing interior projects, but we hope to do some coastal restoration projects too in the not too distant future. Uh, last but not least, I'd like to call on Jerry Gillen, the, uh, the director of the Orleans Levy District, to give us some specifics about the project and answer any technical questions anybody might have. Jerry. Good afternoon. Um, again, the scope of this project is to protect the backfill that supports the seawall uh, and to reduce the, uh, the closures and the cleanup of, of Lakeshore Drive. Um, In-house at the Levy District, we kind of refer to this as our Groundho Groundhog Day movie. Um, seems like every time we clean up, the very next night there's a northern front or a tropical storm, and we're right back at it the next day. And uh, it's been closures of, of Lakeshore Drive for extended periods. So hopefully this is the first phase. Um, this first phase here, which is approximately 3,900 linear feet, at a cost of $6.2 million, uh, should take care of uh, this worst area down here on the west. Uh, we can have a second phase starting uh, construction in about nine months to a year. Uh, that section will be from uh, Franklin Avenue um, heading east uh, just past Shelter 4. Uh, some more particulars about uh, we call this Reach 1B. Design Engineering Inc. is the, is the engineers, and um, we publicly advertised and awarded this contract to the lowest bidder, uh, uh, Shaver's Whittle. Um, the project duration should take a little less than a year to construct. Um, some of the uh, constructed items, uh, the finished product is going to be an elevated concrete cap uh, that's going to extend from behind the uh, Lakeshore Drive seawall to the uh, to the back of Lakeshore Drive itself. It'll be pile supported and also to, uh, also to control the erosion, we're going to uh, install a continuous uh, vinyl sheet pile wall that will run uh, the entire length behind the wall. That'll prevent the water from penetrating between the monolith joints and also undermining uh, that's going on uh, from underneath the seawall steps themselves. The drainage will be improved also. We're going to uh, 
uh, enlarge all the drainage uh, pipe that's uh, in that area now. Um, that drainage takes care of Lakeshore Drive and the parks, so that will also be improved under this project. Um, across from Shelter 1 will be a public plaza. It will be very similar to the Mardi Gras Fountain Plaza, and um, that will be uh, handicap accessible. Uh, it will be concrete colored and, and, and stamped. It will look really nice. We'll have uh, a lot of landscaping all along this 3,900-foot uh, 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 reach. There's approximately 28 planters, and we're going to install 18 to 20 foot tall uh, Louisiana native um, sable palms. Uh, we're going to replace all the benches and put more trash cans along this area. We're also going to install a series of new LED safety and security lighting. Uh, it'll be very similar to the blue poles that you see when you first come through uh, the, flood, the floodgates here uh, to, our, to our west. Um, and they'll be spaced at 100 feet apart. Uh, be located about 10 feet off the back of the seawall uh, and again it's something that's really needed once we make this improvement the public will be able to access it even uh, even during the dark. I think that's really about it. Um, again um, we're going to uh, as far as pedestrian use uh, we're going to have a series of concrete bollards, continuous bollards, that's going to separate the vehicle traffic from uh, pedestrians uh, using Lakeshore Drive uh, to this improved area. And um, as far as during, during the construction, uh, we do have a traffic management plan. Uh, there'll be a maximum of one lane closure um, during this construction. So the two eastbound lanes will remain open and one westbound lane will be closed uh, intermittently. Uh, for periods of during construction and again um, we're still susceptible to um, until to uh, storms and, and tropical storms and northerners that may uh, again um, affect the uh, the un, the, the un, unconstructed areas uh, where we may have to close Lakeshore Drive for extended periods again so um, that's all I have and although this is a groundbreaking today actually the the work has begun just a few short weeks ago how does this fit into all the projects that uh, the district has been involved in since Katrina? Well, this is certainly an important part of the project, and it's going to, as I said, stabilize uh, the seawall, and it, it forms a portion of the entire perimeter system. Were it not for this seawall, we'd be having to do something different to protect those levees that, that are behind the camera now. Oh, this is wonderful because now you see this great partnership between flood protection and community uh, recreational activities. You know, this is what you see in other parts of the world where people get together and they understand that if you've got a problem with flood protection and erosion, you can also develop it in such a way that the community enjoys it for recreation. I'm really excited about it. Uh, thousands of people from throughout the metro area use the lakefront every week. Not just folks in New Orleans, not just folks who live along the lakefront, but people from throughout the area. And the problem we have with erosion along Lakeshore Drive really impacts people's ability to use the lakefront. So every time it rains, every time there's a big storm, the Lakeshore Drive has to be closed, we have flooding and so forth. That all uh, decreases the ability to use the lakefront. So this project is important for hurricane protection because the seawall is part of the hurricane protection system. And it's also critical to ensure that the non-flood assets, which were so damaged by Katrina, are rebuilt in a responsible and effective way. So I'm very excited about it. It's something we waited a long time for, is to start getting on these projects that we, that we have to have in order to improve the quality of the lakefront, improve the protection for the lakefront levee, and at the same time prevent all the damage that's been happening to the lakefront uh, drive and lakefront boulevard. So it's something we've really needed for a long time. I think it's fantastic. This is something that's been real important, not only to the non-flood board, but to the flood board. I think that this is uh, an excellent example of both boards working together. Uh, it's great for flood protection, but it's also important for the quality of life for all the people that live in the lakefront communities, as well as the people throughout the city and the, and the surrounding areas. Uh, a lot of people use the lakefront on the weekends. A lot of people use the lakefront during the week. Uh, and this is going to be a way to preserve that use uh, into the future. It's, it, this is a really big deal and a really big project. Everyone should be happy. Typical storm, not only does this project, not only does the seawall stay here, 
uh, during a hurricane, but it's also here year in and year out. It's been here for 83 years, so it's subject to not only hurricane flood protection, hurricane wave action, but also wave action resulting from ordinary uh, winter storms that result from the northwest. Northwest winds heavily influence this seawall, and, and it's protected us all these years. It's been great for us, so we need, need to preserve it as best we can. This is a great day uh, for flood protection and for the citizens of New Orleans and the neighborhoods along Lakeshore Drive. Uh, it's important that we have mechanisms to uh, hold back uh, the, the waves and water of Lake Pontchartrain. We know how powerful uh, water is and uh, I'm glad to see that the, uh, the, sea well, the seawall will be restored uh, uh, to a, a better protection standard than, than before. Working through Hurricane Isaac with the Southeast Louisiana Flood Protection Authority, representing St. Bernard Parish and the East Bank of Plaquemines, which was devastated during Hurricane Isaac, I've seen these guys in action. I know how hard they work, and I know how hard they work outside of their authority. I really want to say that they have, they, they've gone above and beyond the call of duty. We appreciate them, and we want them to continue. It's a non-paid position. They're all in non-paid positions, and their contributions are, it, it, I can't even describe how invaluable they are to the state of Louisiana. And I just want to make sure that everybody knows that. It's pretty exciting, and I think hopefully it'll be exciting for the local community, too. To, for it to finally get started, uh, you know, means that, that these seawalls will be here, as I said, for years to come. It's great that we're finally starting on this. It's important, and uh, I think the Flood Protection Authority has made an effort uh, to, you know, it, partly in terms of cosmetics, partly in some other ways to make sure that it's consistent with which is what is a tremendous park. It's certainly, I remember coming out here more, I mean, decades ago, uh, just because it's beautiful. It's a beautiful place, and, and we're going to make sure the seawall is consistent with that and, and helps that. If people have questions or would like more information, what should they do? Well, they can either call the district or they can visit our website at www.slfpae.com.